Moving on from the total molecular partition function, let's now look at the piece of it which is due to the motions of particles back and forth inside their container, the translational partition function. So we're assuming that we have some particle inside this box here, and this particle is free to move about in the x, y, and z directions, and this box has dimensions a, b, and c for its uh, length, width, and height. And we're going to say that A and B and C are all equal to each other for the sake of simplicity. And because that's a rectangular prism, the volume is going to be A times B times C, which because those three are all equal is going to be A cubed. Now for the energy levels which are allowed for a particle that's just free to move around in this box, that's going to come from the three-dimensional particle in a box model from quantum mechanics. Remember that the energy levels which are going to be allowed for our particles are going to come from quantum mechanics and then we're going to use statistical mechanics to try to bridge the gap between that quantum mechanical result and our macroscopic thermodynamics. So these energy levels depend on three quantum numbers nx, ny, and nz which all have to be integers starting at one going up from there and they can be chosen independently from each other. And that's going to be Planck's constant squared over 8 times mass of a particle times <clears throat> this uh, volume, well not volume, this dimension parameter here, A, A squared, and then times the sum of the squares of each of these quantum numbers, nx squared plus ny squared plus nz squared. So you can think of this as there's an energy from the x, y, and z directions coming from what quantum level they're in in each of those dimensions. Okay, so now we want to go ahead and start deriving the partition function for this uh, system to get the result that we kind of asserted in the previous video. So we're going to say that our Q trans, our translational partition function, depending on volume and temperature, it's going to equal sum from nx equals 1 to infinity, sum over also ny from 1 to infinity, and finally sum over nz from 1 to infinity. And we're going to sum over the quantity e, or exponential, to the minus beta and then times the energy level, so minus beta times e and x and y and z. So that's going to be a prefactor here of h squared over 8 ma squared. And then times all of these quantum numbers here, nx squared plus ny squared plus nz squared. Okay, so we have to evaluate this triple sum here of all of these Boltzmann factors of all possible energy levels of all these possible combinations of nx and y and nz. So the first assumption we're going to make is that these are separable from each other, that these uh, individual quantum numbers do not depend on each other. And when we say that, then we can say that this exponential can split up into a part that only depends on nx, part that only depends on ny, and a part that only depends on nz. So this triple sum goes to three single sums that we can separate. So our q trans is going to equal sum from nx equals 1 to infinity of exponential of minus beta h squared over 8 ma squared times nx squared, that's the x part, and then similarly we're going to have terms which are going to depend on y and z, but I don't think I have enough room to write them on a single line here, and they're kind of redundant anyway. It's just separating out the same term now with ny substituted in here for the y part, and then nz substituted in here for the z part. But you'll also notice that these sums from nx equals 1 to infinity and y equals 1 to infinity and z equals 1 to infinity, these are all actually the same exact sum. Since this a equals b equals c, these are all in terms of the dimension a since we made this a cube. So all three of these sums are equivalent to each other. So we can actually make this 
these three single sums here, we can just say it's this times itself times itself. And that means we're going to cube it. So our translational partition function becomes sum of, we don't need the subscript for dimension anymore since it's we're not saying which dimension it is, sum of from n equals 1 to infinity, exponential of beta h squared over 8ma squared times n squared. And then this whole thing is going to be cubed. Okay, so this has all been exact so far, assuming that we have a equals b equals c for these dimensions, so we have a cubic box here. Now we're going to assume that this sum from 1 to infinity can be approximated very well by an integral. So in order to evaluate the sum, we're going to evaluate an integral which is going to replace it. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to replace our q with an integral from 0 to infinity. Yes, formally we might be able to do 1 to infinity, but um, this is actually kind of equivalent to evaluating this is kind of equivalent to evaluating an integral using a Riemann sum and this is the integral way of doing that same Riemann sum so it's really not that different and uh, I think if you graph it out and look at the individual boxes versus this whole integral you, can, you should be able to convince yourself that zero is actually a good choice here okay so we're gonna you go from zero to infinity we're gonna integrate e to the minus beta Planck's constant squared n squared over 8ma squared and we're going to integrate that with respect to n and then once we evaluate that integral remember we have to cube it up there so the integral is going to be cubed okay so we have something that looks like e to the minus a n well something that looks like e to the minus alpha x squared dx so if we know the f answer to an integral of this form the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus alpha x squared dx that integral if you look that up will evaluate to pi over 4 alpha to the 1 half so the square root of pi over 4 alpha so how can we make this integral fit that form? Well, we're integrating with respect to n. We have e to the minus n squared, e to the minus x squared, so check. And then the only difference is this multiplicative factor of alpha here. So this b, uh, sorry, this beta h squared over 8ma squared is kind of our alpha here. So I'll write that down, that our alpha equals beta h squared over 8 m a squared. Okay, so substituting that in for our alpha, we're going to have the result that that integral is going to equal, what well, we have pi on the top here. Uh, it's This alpha is on the bottom, so we get to invert that alpha. So it's going to have the 8 m a squared on the top there. And then the 4 is going to stay in the denominator. And this numerator here, and alpha, is going to become a denominator here in our final answer. And we're going to get beta h squared on the bottom there. And then remember, we were also cubing this uh, integral once we got the answer. So this integral cubed is going to be all of this cubed as well. And notice that we have the factor here. We have an 8 over 4, so that 4 is going to cancel, and that is going to become a 2. Okay, so getting closer to our final result now. We're going to have that Q is going to equal 2 pi m a squared over beta h squared. Oh, sorry, I forgot this. We have a factor of one-half here. So this cubed here 
is going to get take is going to get multiplied by this exponent of one half taking the square root. So this is to the power of three halves. Okay, so moving that down here, we have this times three halves. But you'll notice here in here on the inside we have of this q we have a squared taken to the three halves power. So that's going to be a squared times the, taken to the three halves is going to be a cubed that we could pull out here. And you'll also notice that a cubed is equal to volume. So if we pull out a factor of a cubed, so we're going to cancel that, and we're going to pull an a cubed to the outside, that's going to be equal to volume. So we're going to have our final result here that our translational partition function for our ideal non-interacting particles here or a single particle here sorry not doing uh, many particles in this video just doing one particle so our particle for that has its translational energy levels uh, of these inside its box is going to be 2 pi m over beta Planck's constant squared to the 3 halves power times volume. So that is what we asserted in the previous video that the translational partition function for a single particle inside of some box like this is going to be 2 pi mass of particle over inverse temperature beta times Planck's constant squared all of that to the 3 halves power times volume. So there we go, we started with just what the energy levels were and what the Boltzmann factor for each energy level was and if you sum over all of the Boltzmann factors of every energy level you get your final translational partition function there which we can use to derive our thermodynamic properties from from its various derivatives and logarithms. So we went all the way from the microscopic behavior of a single quantum mechanical particle used statistical mechanics to get the partition function and then did various manipulations to that to derive thermodynamics, the macroscopic behavior.